what's the minimum granularity of the one object? Of the whole object. The whole object. Yes. So, yes. so, so is, is it from that object all the way down the graph from it, or just that no. object? No. Objects contain references to other objects. Right. But each object stands alone. And so it's up to you to pick a right level in the tree. And so if your domain model is structured so that a customer has a collection of addresses, and addresses have a city and a state and a postal code and a street, you could lock every object and that would ensure that no one else modifies it. You could write your application so that the only code that modifies addresses has a lock on the customer. If you never edit an address without having a lock on a customer, then locking the customer will guarantee that your edits to the address will be safe. If, if I lock the customer, yes. and let's say a customer just has a string for address and a string for name, right? Yes. And so, but then somebody else not acquiring the lock on the customer goes through and changes the name. When it does the lock check there, because it's the name and not the customer that's changed, it's going to pass through that lock check, right? Okay. When is the name a string? Yes. And have they modified the characters that are in the string, or did they create a new string? Uh, tell me what would happen with both. Uh, yes, good. Okay. okay. Well, clearly, if you modify the characters that are in a string, then you've modified the string. And the customer still has, in the instance variable called name, it still has the same object. And so you're not modifying the customer. The only thing that you do when you modify an object is change the value of instance variables. I mean, this is small talk. Right. The only thing you do when you modify an object is change the value of instance variables. If you don't change the value of the instance variable, that is, the identity of the string that you reference in, from a customer object, then you're not changing the customer object. If you change the bytes in the string, then you're changing the string. If someone locked the customer and someone else modified the bytes in the string, we would not recognize that as a conflict because you're modifying the bytes in a string instead of modifying the object. So we won't catch that. So, so If you change the reference so that instead of, if you create a new string that has all the same characters except one is different, then that new string will be referenced from the customer object and you'll be modifying the customer object so lock will be a conflict. So theoretically it is possible to have a lock on something and still end up with the right conflict. If, if no. I, if, but, but, no, but if no. I lock the customer, but then somebody else doesn't, they don't have to, they don't have to get the lock on it. They could change the string to referencing something else. And I could... Wait, no, not change the string to referencing something else. Oh, change change, change the customer to reference a different string. Yes. Or change the contents of the string. Change the customer to reference a different string. If they change the customer to reference a different string, and you have a lock... They can't, okay. Their commit will fail. Right. Their commit will fail. The, the lock is in the customer. Right. Because the lock is on the customer. So if someone else has a lock on the customer, and I try to reference a different string from the customer instance variable. But if we had an address, and inside the address we had an object which was a country, yes. if they change that, yes. then that could go through. Yes, that okay. would go through. All right. Now, that's simply a statement of as a database vendor, I don't know what the proper semantics right. are. And so, for example, if I'm an employee and my employer is Gemstone and Gemstone has an address, if you lock the James employee record, someone else can change Gemstone's address. But that might be reasonable. 
I mean, if the office moved, then you'd want to change the address for all the employees. And you wouldn't want to have to lock each of the employees to do it. Right. I mean, if Gemstone's address changes, then Gemstone's address changes, but that isn't James's address. So it's up to you as an application developer to choose the logical granularity at which the lock should be acquired. And so that might be a customer. On the other hand, it might not. You might have customer, and you might split customer into demographics and orders. And just because someone in the accounting office is updating the customer's credit limit shouldn't mean that someone in the order fulfillment office shouldn't be able to mark a customer or uh, uh, an order as being filled. Right. And so it's up to you to design your application so that it's logically consistent from your point of view.